behind the screen deck there's a pocket graphics holder. Other side. You look at it, you can see it. What's happening, everyone? Welcome to Thursday Night Airbrush Down Dirty Tricks Live. We are here. It's not Thursday night. It's Friday night because last night was way too hot. Tonight's still pretty hot, but we're doing much better. Uh, so let's make sure we got good sound. Let's make sure we got good video. And we will get this thing rolling. Let me see if I can hear what it sounds like. Okay, on my end, it sounds good. So I should be hearing what you're hearing. So I'll wait for you guys to tell me, and we will get this shindig on the road. To everyone on Facebook, hi, I'll do my best to check in with you all. The way I normally view it is not working, so I had to go back to my phone, which doesn't always show comments. So if you're still on, cool, say hi if you can. Go over to YouTube, it's much better over there. Um, and uh, you get much better quality video and audio, because uh, Facebook One, we always know is a problem. We're not going to dwell on that. We're going to keep going. Good. Sounds good. All right. We're going to get rolling into this. Let's bring up what we got going on here. We are doing. We got Michael Cohen. Let's see. Let's see what we got in here first before we get into this. We got Mr. Leahy. We got Teresa. We have Raymond Carson. Big Squash. Martial Artistry. FTW, you know who you are. Paul, oh, Chad, Mr. Voss, and we're good. We've got a couple people over on Facebook. What's up, Daniel? You know, like seven people over there. I can send Facebook. I will do my best to watch for you guys. Uh, just not cooperating like usual. But all right, let's show you what we got going on here. We got Uncle Scully. All right, Uncle Scully is something I've done quite a few times, different variations and. Uh, for those of you who took my class way, way back in ABU, we actually did a version of this back then. I think that was the only time I actually taught it. 
was an ABU, which is going back well over a decade or more ago. Uh, and I think back then I just did the head. And this is a new variant of it. Uh, and I've made it available on the store at mckayfineart.com, which is right here. So you can go over there and download the vectors now. It's a twenty dollars download. And basically, what I did is I sized it for two different panels. The one we're doing tonight is eleven by fourteen, and then for a twelve by eighteen panel, uh, it's less cut off, so you get the whole jacket that goes all the way on the bottom, stuff like that. But it's the same size. It's um, it's just set up for two different you know common file sizes. Colors we are going to be using tonight. Da -da 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 -da. Paint list. This is what I'm doing for colors tonight. Um, I have, I'm using my normal four to one mix. Uh, I got 40, 50, which I put in a little bit of the colors and then one of the candies, so I use the candies. Uh, we got 40, 50, 50 white, 50, 51 black. Uh, what's that? Illustration white, illustration black, illustration cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, and scarlet. Those are the main colors I'm using throughout the project. I may add violet into my black, and I may use a candy black at the end, but those are kind of optional if you're following along with the how-to following the project. Uh, you can add them in for tone, uh, but they're not necessary if you don't have them. Hey, Gary, she's how you doing, man? Um, like I said, those are optional in there, but the other ones, you'll need it. So, you know, you can get the same result without the other two if you don't have them, so don't go out and get them. My fit Motor Works over YouTube. How's it go, man? Thanks for popping in over there. It's much better over here. Cheers, everyone. Everyone can kind of jot down that list. And we will get cracking on this. Kaylee was in for a second just to help get started. But she's got volleyball camp starting early tomorrow. And like we gotta go there at like 7 a.m. So I'd rather her get some sleep. All right. And with that being said, we're gonna get rolling. Of course, we're gonna talk about all the lovely brands we use here over on Airbrush Down Matrix with Fisheye Filters, Anesta Water Airbrushes, obviously. Hey Michael, uh Create Text Colors we just talked about. FBS, this is the FBS blue mask, which is this mask right here. Uh, the FBS Blue. I don't know why I got white. That was weird. Odd. So it's FBS Blue Mask is what we're using here. And what's great about that is uh, it cuts like butter. Uh, it doesn't overstretch. And um, it. Um, if you're on gas tanks and motorcycle tanks like I typically am, it's just outstanding curve. You know, you can stretch this stuff on a dime. Uh, let's see here. What happened to my super source? No, no. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. Lost my background. Hold, please. All right, sorry about that. But I got a different one that I'm gonna to use tonight. I'm gonna to try this for the first time. Make this a little clearer and cleaner. And do this one right here. No moving background. All right. Yeah, this is a cool one, man. I've, I've liked this design. I've done it on a few motorcycles. I've done it on quite a few things over the years. So um, it's a really nice, it's a really nice add-on. And I can do that now during the feed if you don't want to look at my mug the whole time. Makes it nice and easy. 
I'm going to bring up the reference image right there. All right, so this is what you get in the file. So the file has this vector download here, which is up on screen, and the reference image, which is just a traditional old school um, Uncle Sam. Uh, the only thing I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to put stripes on the uh, hat. Maybe just uh, do red, white, red, white. So and I think I'll just be able to do those. And, you know, you don't have to do them, but basically if you were to do it, or you, once you have the vector file, you can add a couple, you know, stripes in like that uh, into the vector super easy. Uh, or just do what I'm going to do. I've already got this laid out. And if you checked out my feed prior, not in my feed, but on my shorts, I have this on YouTube shorts, how I prep the panel, what the panel is, and how I got it here on the board so you can see everything. So we don't have to go over all that here. Um, so like I said, I'm going to just manually add these. And we'll do red, white, red, white. You know, we're going to peek a little bit of red on this side too. That way we have red on both ends. And we'll get a nice framework, all right? So that's super easy. Now you're going to do for that, nice fresh X-Acto blade. One pull. Don't do this a ton. So, Daniel, if you're still over on Facebook, uh, you can, yeah, pop over to YouTube. It's just a lot more stable, and I can actually see your comments. From there to there. The reason I say one, a lot of guys, when you're starting out, people with nerves to do two cuts. If you do two cuts... You're gonna see two cuts. If you do one cut, when you paint, it'll fill right up to that cut line. It'll look fine. Uh, but if you do two cuts, chances are you're gonna see both cuts. And that ink pen does not stay, so it does not dry out. So I'm gonna wipe that off before I smear black ink on my pen. All right. All right. So I think we're good. So. For those of you who followed my work in the past and how I like to work, it, it, guys, if you're not downloading this vector, you don't have a plotter, you don't need it. You could do this by, you know, a pencil cut. You could print it out and do cut work. Uh, you could also, like, just, you know, if you want to just free draw it and go from there. Um, it's easy enough to follow. So, I always work background to foreground, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the coat because that's pretty much in the background. Everything that's going to be white... Especially like, you know, so the white shirt, the white cuffs, and the, the skeleton is going to be white, and most of the hat is. That's going to stay pretty much masked to the very end, because this is a white panel. So all the white's already there. All right? So I'm going to start with the blue of the jacket, and the first color I'm using is the ultramarine blue. You remember from our paint list here, it's the, uh, the 5640 ultramarine blue. You can use cerulean blue. You can use any blue you want. Um... Use like a mid-tone blue, because I'm going to do mid-tone blue, and then we'll, we'll, we'll darken it, okay? So I'll show you how I'm going to do all that. And then we're going to just take this and bring the reference image back up. And you're going to tell if you want to pay your taxes, you're going to give me... What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's why I'm doing the, the skull. A little bit more fun than the original... I want you, and um, we can just poke more fun at it. But let's not get all political tonight. This is fun. This was originally supposed to be the day after New Year's, but that didn't happen. Not New Year's, but God, New Year's. <laughs> um, after the 4th of July. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling the jacket, but not the collars, because the collars are above the jacket. So this way I can do the blue and I can drop shadow that. And this just kind of hangs right here. You can pull it off if you want. And just kind of leave it. Uh, it just doesn't... I don't like to have the lines cut all the way up. like you, Because if you spray too much, you're going to get a line up there. By this, I can just kind of roll that back and not get it. Alright, so the first color I got here is ultramarine blue. And when you look at the painting, look at the reference. I'm going to keep this kind of like... Somewhat painterly. I'm doing just the sleeves. They want to tint that blue.
you know, if you want to do like a little harsher folds, you can take a loose shield like this and just get it worked in. So see now, because I left this here, I'm just putting a little bit of paint down there. Now I can pull where the sleeve is, and you get that nice little fold of the jacket. And I can come back around here. And this is gonna be pretty dark down here, guys, so don't worry too much about it. This is just to get a little color on there and shape. Uh, what a TH2, when I haven't picked it up yet. Uh, TH2 is a beast, man. I love that thing. I wish it was new. New Year's. Yeah, it'd be a lot cooler. Yep. Hey, Chris. How you doing, man? Now, looking at my subscribers, we are almost at 9,000. We are at 8,970-something, which is awesome. Thank you, guys. When I look at my stats, it still says like 67% of viewers aren't subscribed, which is so typical on YouTube. It's funny to hear a lot of guys talk about that. So I hope everyone had a great fourth. We had a good one here, just the weather was not great. And I was still kind of feeling a little out of the weather. The reason I haven't been on it a few weeks is I thought I actually had, I thought I was stupid. I got a chemical burn you know, on my side, you know, on the side, like under my arm. And it wasn't getting better, it wasn't getting better. Because I was messing around with my 3D printer and I thought, oh, maybe I got some of the resin on it. And, you know, that's what I thought it was. And then finally went to the doctor's because it wasn't healing well. It was getting worse. And... Turns out it was shingles. <laughs> so that's why I've been down for a couple weeks. Which uh, is not fun, let me tell you. Let me tell you, it is not fun. Yeah, the LPH80, the nice thing is, so the TH2 is amazing. It hits just the right spot uh, from an, what an airbrush struggles to get. And then uh, for what airbrush struggles to get to... You know, it starts getting really kind of grainy to get that big. And then an LPH-80 is almost too big to get to where you want it. The, the, L, the, LP, the, the, the TH-2 just hits that sweet spot perfect on any other brush I've used. Uh, and I've used other fan types from other companies and other brands. For some reason, what they do with the TH-2 head, it atomizes so silky smooth. It's just, some of the stuff I've done with it on bikes, I've been amazed on how large I've been able to do it and how smooth I've been able to get the atomization. Uh, a lot of other ones will get as wide as the, the TH2, some of the other brands, but they don't atomize the paint. They're kind of gloppy, or they're really, like, I want to say pixely, but they're grainy. Uh, the TH2, you're, you're not going to hate it. It's just an amazing brush. So, yeah. Um, if you have any issues with it, let me know. A lot of people have issues with fan tip airbrushes, and they get what's called a split fork, so you get two high spots on the edge. That's because you're going too high pressure. A lot of people, like, oh, I need a big fan, so I'm going to jack that pressure up. On fan-type airbrushes, just like spray guns, if the pressure's too high, you'll actually get, a, like, a snake bite, we call it, uh, nickname, because you're getting too high spots on the outer edges of the, of the fan horns because it's pushing too much. Play that pressure. The pressure doesn't need to be very high to get a really nice, smooth spray. Okay, so this is the Ultramarine. Uh, I can actually get up here, too. I just might have to do a little tricky back masking for the red but that's fine
Yeah, man, it's tough. It's so painful. That's why, like, it, it hurt so much when I first got it. I'm like, oh, man, this is either really bad poison ivy or it's a chemical burn, the way it felt. And as it's, as I'm trying to get it to heal and put stuff on it and I calm it down, and it's just getting worse, and it's just getting worse. And so, like, so I finally go to the doctor, and the doctor goes, if I didn't know better, I think it was shingles. And I'm like, nah, no, nah, I definitely, I must have done something with my thing, you know, self. And the more I started thinking about it, the more I started looking at it, I'm like, dude, this is damn shingles. So, yeah, and then I just had to kind of sleep. I was, man, it was like, it was a COVID feeling, too. It was just, it was just like, it's just, I needed downtime. So that's why I've been pretty much not laid up, but just kind of out of it for the past two weeks. This is where having two airbrushes is going to come in much handier because the other blue I'm going to use is cobalt blue, which is a 5059 cobalt blue. And I'm going to use that as my kind of darker color without going to black yet. I don't want to go there. Something else in there, or I'm gonna consider this puppy wrapped up. Yeah, so, uh, Raymond, so the TH2 is an airbrush that w that has comes with a fan cap. So instead of spraying with just a round dot like this, it'll actually spray in like a traditional fan pattern like that, but small on a small scale. So, and the LPH80, that is an actual. I'm gonna use a darker blue. It really isn't that dark, so I think I might have to add a little black to it sooner than I wanted to. But it is a nice richer blue, so. Oh, I actually forgot a spot. So if you guys follow along, that's white, white. There's, some, there's a little blue. A little blue under there. Yeah, you know what? The Ultramarine and the Cobalt are pretty close. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a couple drops of black into my Cobalt Blue and just make it a shadow color right now. So now, you'll see that it goes darker a lot quicker. And I'm not trying for like crazy detail. I, I still want that kind of painter feel. And if you wanted to kind of give it a painter feel, you could actually brush paint things. You could take some like texture effects and just give it a little, a little something. <coughs> <'Cause> remember, <coughs> remember, this is going to be a skeleton, so um, it doesn't have to be all clean if we want it. Yeah, you know, we might at the end put some like holes and tears and some things like that in it. But now we can get that nice kind of dark color underneath. And this is where, I mean, you can really go as dark as you want. What could go wrong? Let's see here. You're welcome, Raymond. What was it? Is there an issue on your end? Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, I'm feeling better. Cool. So now I got that nice kind of jacket tone. Let's get up in here. We're going to hit the sides darker because they roll around darker. I'm just going to put a little dark ridge 
to kind of be like a band going around it. But notice I'm still keeping that kind of that radius of letting the let it stay brighter here. And that way it still gives that nice rounded radius feel. Just like my Airbrush 101 Basics. Uh, it just shows that by having the highlight in the middle, you get that nice radius. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Much appreciated, sir. Thank you. And when you look at, like, the original old school, it was pretty black on this side. I'm not going to go that dark, but you can go as much as you want. Um... You know, and there's other, like, texture stencils you could do. Let's see. Do I have... I don't think I've ever really used it on here. No, I thought I had... I thought I had Drew Blair's, um... It's like a, he did, like, a denim. No, I don't have it. But you could use like fine skin. But you can get like a denim feel and this all sorts of stuff you can do. But I'm not gonna go too nuts. We get we can add most of that stuff back in at the end. Okay, so I got that, I got that, I got that. Now I need to get the lapels, the collars, right? Lapels? Or collars? Lapels, right? Yeah. Sure. Uh, and I'm gonna pull the top ones down. because this one's over this one. So I wanna make sure that shadows properly. This one, I believe I can pull both. Yep, I can. So we'll pull both these collars. And this one actually comes through here like this. Is that, oh, wait, 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 wait. I might have, let me see what I got here. Oh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to go back. Right here under the... This is part of the sleeve. This one I pulled out earlier. I need to get here, which is between the jacket and the sleeve. And that needs to be darker. So, super simple. Easy fix. And I put that back. And I can use just a little... One of my templates here. This is a 11 by 14, 11 inches wide, 14 tall panel. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna hit that through. a little bit better. Most would never notice if I did it wrong, but I noticed, so I want to make sure it's right. Go back to this panel here, and we can start making him blue. Notice what I'm doing is I'm starting from back here and I'm letting the overspray cast because it's, it's not changing this color, but I'm, I'm getting that kind of brighter edge, which is just going to help lift everything up. And actually careful again this piece goes inside there like that
So notice I'm starting with that lighter color. Yes, this design is up on the site right now over on mckayfineart.com. It's a $20 download. And then you can refer back to this video anytime. I haven't going back through some of the videos and editing them out so they're a little cleaner to follow along with. And I'm going to keep doing that. Um, because it's definitely it's nice for everyone. Oh, do you want to try something different? Look, so we got the red background. This might be too bright. Let me know if you all hate it. Ta -da! Happy Fourth. Late Fourth. I designed that for the you know fourth background, so everything's kind of framed in nice. But it might be too loud. <laughs> Yeah, a few people already downloaded it today, which is great. And for those of you guys who downloaded it today, if you downloaded the first thing this morning when it went up, you should have an email. I went back in afterwards. I noticed a few things I wasn't super thrilled with uh, and made an adjustment. And I, you should get that notification if you already have it. And the other thing you got to watch out for in this one is the sleeve comes between these two knuckles right here okay not the sleeve the um the lapel the blue comes right through there you want to make sure you get those now i can pull this one off Yeah, I've been trying to make up some different backgrounds so I can, like, you know, I'm framed better um, and less motion without the motion. So I've been learning some new tricks on the switcher. And then, you know, so I can go to that one. I can go back to this one. And uh, live, which makes it nice and easy. So for some reason, this ultramarine blue I mixed up, I didn't... I think I overreduced it a little bit because it's really watery. So I'm gonna take my time with it, which isn't so much a bad thing. It's just I gotta be a little slower on that first pass. The cool thing is I can go back in later and edit this and I can actually change the camera angles from what you guys are seeing now later in post. Because the way my the system I have is the way it records it. Right now, when I when it, I always thank Steve for reminding me to. Uh, nah, not gonna be in rainbow colors. But if someone wants to do it, go for it. Um, the um, the way my system records it records this whole video I'm doing to you guys, but it also records each camera at the same time. And every video source and switch, so I have all, all everything in post production at 4K, so I can do a lot in post production. But I'm learning how to do all that editing. You know, editing one or two cameras and bringing stuff in was fine, but editing four cameras and video switching is a little bit of a learning curve, but we're getting it. I'm gonna make sure heavy shadow. Let that hands cast a nice heavy shadow beneath. But the cool thing is now that's the majority of the jacket. I mean, that's done. We can go back through and highlight at the end. If you want to put stitching in, you can do some racing techniques. And, like, if you want to go in and put, like, like the uh, sleeves were stitched on. A 
couple of things like that. Yeah, little quick things like that. When customers see them at the end, they really, they really dig it. Shadow them out. And see, it just looks like a little added touch. Mini split up there. I should put a mini split up where. Oh, I got AC in my studio. I got two ACs running. It's not that. In fact, this is a third floor of a 130-year-old house, which in normal is within an attic, but this house is, the way it's set up, this is a full floor. Now, there's actually a little attic space above it. There's so much heat on a 98-degree day coming through the roof that it's just, you'd have to hit a big exhaust fan to get the heat out and then cool it before it could heat up again. So it's just, there's really only a couple days a year it gets this tricky, and that's usually on like a, you know, 100-degree day, so... I moved it to, you know, I have a, right now there's a 12,000 BTU unit running. If I put an 18,000 mini split up here, it might be a little better, but that'll be for the next studio. Well, unless the sponsors want to kick it in, or people want to help sponsor it, then. <laughs> and it wasn't really about painting in the heat. Everyone's like, oh, I paint in heat all the time. Yeah. Paint in heat live on camera. With about eight, nine thousand dollars in tech equipment running that could overheat and pop. <laughs> That's why I decided not to do it last night. Not that I don't love you guys, but I don't want to buy all that equipment again and have to reprogram it. Not one and we can just run it on another night. That's what we did. Big squatchy, thank you, sir. Oh, the MySpace backgrounds, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I can go back to like the, the moving one. We can go back to do a side by side. I don't like the side by side with the moving backgrounds way too much, especially because it's in blue. Yeah, let's go back to the red. I think that's actually, it helps a little bit more. You can spray foam the attic. Now the attic's fully insulated. You know, it's a fully insulated attic with walls, inner walls inside it. It's just the fact that it's a 130-year-old three-story house. <laughs> uh, and you're competing with, yeah, you're competing with the roof. So it's just, like I said, there's only, it's the, it's fully insulated. You know, the winter, it's great. It's just, you get like two or three days where 190, to, you know, the 90s, I think we were, yesterday we, my car was reading 101. So when you add 101 degrees right above the studio, then you turn on, uh, one, two, three. Studio lights, background lights, computers, compressors. So three computers, AV systems. It, it's tough. It's tough to keep the heat down. And the other problem is, I have to shut most of these a the ACs off during the feed, or you'll hear it all, because it, it just it'll it picks up on it. So, it, like I said, there's only a couple days. Yeah, you know, where it gets tricky. Like I said, we could put a much bigger system in the house and cool it and do some stuff, but um, it's a cost to reward <laughs> issue at that point. All right, back on track. So we are going to do the. We're going to we're going to be switching off blue now. Blue's pretty much done. And we're going to do red. Yeah, like, you know, like yesterday, we were it was 101 outside, and with everything going on, I could get my studio to 83 degrees. Uh, I could have probably got a cooler if I turn more fans on, but then I can't run the system anyway because it's just too much, too, too much noise. Um, it's just a catch-22. The next house... And, you know, I have a fieldstone basement, so I can't do it on a basement level. And my garage is all the automotive setup, so it doesn't have all this film studio. Because uh, I don't want all this out in a garage where I do all the other work. Oh, yeah. Just 
stuff to deal with. First world problems. <laughs> and the other thing is, when it's that hot up here, painting's just not fun. All right, so if you're not comfortable freehand or using a Lucia, like what I'm going to do here is it's such a small gap. I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to take a loose shield like that. And just come right up from the bottom. This one here is a little wavier, so if you're not comfortable, you can actually use a paper cut. So you can actually take this and paper cut it and put it on there. Um, or just not worry about it and freehand it and leave a little white on the bottom. Because that red, when it goes over the blue, is going to make almost a natural purple shadow. And it's not going to matter much anyway. I mean, I just can't pay comfortable or not. Yeah, so we have a six zone system in the house. But the first, this is a 135 year old Victorian. Um, and so they have four zone, five zones on the first two floors between all the different rooms because there's so many rooms in the house um, because old houses were cut up as rooms, not just big open spaces. And then the attic's its own zone. Um, but we have no central. There's no way to do central in this house. It's, it's even the high flow through the walls. It's, I don't have to do mini split. Like my mini split in my shop, my garage, it works amazing. I love that thing. That's my favorite. What I like about the mini splits, too, a lot of people don't have mini splits, don't realize it. And I, I'm not sure you would know better than I would. I have a Dakin, and the Dakin has heat, AC, and dehumidifier. So the nice thing is, when I get those, like, humid days in the summer when I'm painting or working in the shop, I can take the humidity out of the shop, which makes it even better. You know, because you can get that, that humidity out before you're, you're just trying to cool off moist air. Shout out from Mexico. Thank you, sir, for popping in. You're in Monterey. Yeah, 111 degrees. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just got to change things up. And, you know, when, when I'm doing larger work, sometimes you paint at night, man. You just paint at night when it cools off and there's no one around. And that's the best time to do it. Like, when I go in the shop, you know, my shop's, um, my commercial shop is the next town over. You know, that's where the spray booth, the big booth and all the work is over there. Well, this time of year, I don't go there during the day. I go there at like midnight. So I'm going to pull the little bow tie off here. This is where it's really simple. Nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, yeah. So when when my HVAC guy did my garage, he's like, yeah, you know, I was looking at you know the Mitsubishi's. He's like, don't he goes, don't waste the money on the Mitsubishi. He goes, get the Dakin. He goes, they're cheaper, they're as good if not better. So, and I've been happy with it. It's an outstanding machine. So I'm going to add a few drops of black into that red. And now I can just kind of get under here. Get that bow tie. We'll get a couple little wrinkles. We can go back in on a harsher hit later. And then come up here. Just hit a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. Voila! So that's the major two colors. Everything out here, from here on out, is pretty much a black and white painting that we can tone shades in later. So what I've done for... Dropped by Takumi. But we're all good. Luckily, I put a padded floor down in here. <laughs> Keon Calls, man, uh, thank you for popping in. Thank you all for sharing and commenting and coming each week and showing up. 
And thank you to all the ones who are downloading. What are, the force? What are your thoughts on the 4013? So you know what? I don't use the 4013 much. I use the 4011 for everything. In my mix up here, um, I do a 4 to 1 of the... Um, I'll put it on my paint list here. So I take the 4011 and the 4020. And I do a 4 to 1 mix. And I find that's just perfect. Right where I need it to be. Uh, almost every time. Because uh, the 4020 uh, kicks it really fast. Um, but the 4013 is great. I like it. I just... Um, because I do so much automotive work that I have the 4020 on hand. Um, so I, I kind of personally like the 4 to 1 mix of that better than the 4013 by itself, personally. But they both work outstanding. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, where are we? Oh, Michael, good. You got the shirt. Which, which, uh, which one did you get? So a couple of the designs I actually pulled that I didn't like. I, I got um, I got the sweatshirt. I didn't like I liked the t-shirt. And then when I got the sweatshirt, the back felt like plastic the way they were doing it. So I pulled that one off the store. I don't think it, no one else ordered it but me. Um, and then there was one other shirt that had the red splat on the front. Um, some of they were, the red isn't as rich as I want it, so I'm gonna tweak that or just go to a white paint splat with the red outlines. It works good. So thanks for popping and getting those shirts. And I think if you guys are watching on YouTube, if you look below, you'll probably see the store with the hats and things like that. One thing I did get, which when I one thing that's really cool, I love this. It's bigger than I thought it was gonna be, but it's a one of those desk mats. You know, it's a big mouse pad mat for your for your desk. These printed amazing. So these are on there. So this is basically it's a huge ass mouse pad. These are really cool. I like that. And the glasses and mugs are cool. But yeah, thanks for uh, ordering the shirts and uh, supporting the channel. All that stuff helps me, guys. All that stuff helps. All right, so the color I'm doing for pretty much the rest of it until we do highlights. Oh, the green one with the skull. Yeah, man. If you, I haven't seen, I haven't ordered one. I haven't got one in person yet. So if you want, message me after. I'd love to see what it looks like. Um, let me know if you think the green is popped enough. Because uh, it's always hard to tell when you upload them on screen, you know, what they're going to look like in final print. Um, you know, I want to make sure it's good. And if I do make any changes, I'll let you know. But, but um, the green should look really good. The blue look good. It's always red. Reds on black shirts are always troublesome to get them right. So, oh yeah, Raymond, the mat's awesome. Uh, it's so good, um, and the mugs came out great too. Not to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna sales pitch for a sec here. came out really good. I don't have one up here. The stitching looks great on the hats. Oh, I do. Coffee mugs. Came out awesome. This is the gray one. Uh, they have them in black as well. I, I wish it went all the way around, but they just don't. Uh, so I might make one with no color background, and so it's just a graphic, and make it a black splat. I might redo that. And then a nice pint glass. These came out great. These came out really good. I don't make much off these guys, right? The way that the systems work is they're printed on demand and I make like a buck or two off each one if I'm lucky. And yeah, so like this like this was a sweatshirt and I like the design, but they like oversaturated it and it became plasticky. So I have to redesign it for the sweatshirts. But I did do the uh, the classic design, which is my original tag demon, and that one looks awesome. The t shirts printed great. They don't have that plastic feel. And of course, Turka hats. Turka hats came out really bitching. Okay, good stitch. Uh, really nice and tight, really clean. I was actually really surprised because hats I'm usually really picky about. I wish they had fitted hats, but they just, I don't, they don't have them. But this might be something I do down the road if people want them. 
All right, that's my sales pitch. <laughs> Gonna have to send you something. That pine glass. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Right now we got this. We're good. All right. Put my reference image back up. All right, so basically here, this is where if you follow any of my videos, you start noticing, okay, what's the lowest piece? And we're going to work from background to foreground. All right, so I know the collared shirt is beneath everything. I know the hand is in the most foreground, so that's going to be last. So we're going to go here, and then we're going to do like the collar, the, um, the white collar of the shirt here and then here get all that going before we start working up and then we get up into the skull all right it'll all make sense as you go through so the first thing I'm taking off is inside there we can take off quite a few things at once because this collar you can't see it on this side you could put a little peak of a white collar it's because it's really behind because um, you have the jacket and then this is the collar of the shirt that's opened up and this is the shirt that's underneath so we're gonna do they're gonna go here 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 and there. That's what you got to be pulling off to start to keep it really simple. And this color, I'm using my black, which I put a little bit of purple in my black, which I said the optional violet. So you could do the optional 50-55 violet. I actually put maybe even you know, 10% of that into my black before I reduced it. Uh, that way, it's got a little bit of a like a purplish black tone and I can build off of that. That's just how I like to paint. All right, so we're gonna do up inside the collar shirt and kind of look at the reference material. A little bit inside here too. This is pretty much black. And that can carry right out. The cool thing about this is you can start like add more detail and shadow to the blue because the black will work with it. Not sure if anyone's still on Facebook. If, if anyone's still on Facebook, I'm sorry, I can't see your comments. Still, this is one person. So thank you for watching about oh, three people so i'm just not seeing comments on facebook i can see how many people are there but it won't show me the comments unless i see the exact time you watch them so pop over on youtube much better quality video all right so that's up inside the sleeve so that can be pretty dark and if you look at the reference you can see that kind of give that little ripple of the shirt doesn't have to be crazy. Um, if you want, you can actually put the masking back on. Like if you wanted to, to put masking, you can put it back on. I'm not gonna bother. I like to keep it looser and freehand and I can kind of bring that shadow up like this and darken the lapel at the same time. I can darken underneath the bow tie like it's casting a shadow. And then the beard's actually casting a shadow. Use that collar. You can put as much. Yeah, the video, and you know, the funny thing, Keon, is it's is it's the exact same feed. It's just how Facebook downsamples it. Um, so it is what it is. I can't do anything about it.
But I know the cool thing is a lot of you guys follow me on my Facebook feed, which is great. So the Facebook's a way to, I, you kind of get you over here to YouTube. Um, and I have a lot of family who are just on Facebook that like to watch it over there, watch it back. So that's why we, that's why I keep it, keep it going. Listen, I'm just really, I'm doing a lot out here just very loose because I still want that kind of painter feel. And I can darken right behind that skull a lot. Darken right underneath there. I want to darken under this lapel a lot. I want it almost black underneath the hands. In between, I want it almost black. Yeah, you could do one as Trump for sure. You could do one. You just change the face. You could pop anything in and out. Um, for those who downloaded already, keep an eye out. I might actually, um, I might actually add another vector of the actual Uncle Sam face in hand, so you have that as an option. I just haven't done it uh, yet. I didn't get to that, um, but right now, so that would be a bonus if I do it. So just know, if any of you download my stuff, if I change or update it, I don't charge people for another update. You know, um, and a lot of times if you've seen other other stuff, I've added to other downloads in the past where now the download's more money than it was when you first downloaded it, but because you downloaded it prior, you get the upgrade automatically. So I don't like to nickel and dime everyone. Cool. All right, so we got to do, you know, we can do now. Actually, we can pull off all this. We can pull off the stars. I should use my pick tool instead of the blade. Yeah, YouTube's always a lot better than than Facebook. I just, you know, I used to, dude. Facebook used to rock when I used to do a live feed. I get 100, 200 people notified as soon as I hit it. And then, um, yeah, Scott Voss, you know, you know, as soon as I update something, I, I send out a blast. You guys are the first ones to get it. Cool. Now I can actually pull these all out. So all this stuff, because they're not touching you can pull off. This is going to be part of the hat. There are no bids on this as of yet, sir. This is wide open. At least not a bid I've seen. Keon Colors, thank you for that. Appreciate it. All right, so I don't have to do too much here. I'm just going to shadow along that brim. I'm going to come out here. This is going to be pretty dark because it's the back of the underside of the brim. Just little soft dagger strokes. Nice shadows there. I'm going to come up and do a little core shadow up the side. Just like that. Come across the top just a little bit. Come down this side. Andrew Blue, yeah, thank you very much. Hope you had a great fourth as well. We had a pretty low-key fourth. The weather was kind of meh up here. A little rainy, and I was just getting over being sick, so... But, oh no, a good day. So the hat's pretty much rendered in. And if you follow some of my videos on how to choose before, you know that I like to not, as I'm pulling mask, I try not to finish each section. I try to get it, I try to get it 
to that some point almost done. That way, once all the math's off, I, I have a lot of room and freedom for freehanding and additional work and just softening edges up and doing all the final details. I try not to overdo it while the mask is still on. Honey, how we doing? Thank you for popping in. On this Uncle Scully project. So down here, just little. Because the work's already done, I can just do little work on the sleeves. And I'm actually going to separate the sleeve by doing just, I'm going to use my, I just put a little curve down there to separate the sleeve. And we're going to put a little hole where the button, button hole would be. See how that's just that little bit of additional work? And I'm gonna put some like jagged stuff in here, and, you know, because he is a skull. It's not. I don't want it to be all super perfect and clean. I want it to be a little dirty and grimy. And but this is the cool thing about this project. I can just keep working it. I'm going to actually show you just a top-down camera, if I can. I don't know why that's on there. That shouldn't be there. Off, off. Weird. Huh. That's not supposed to be there. Well, something got messed up on that one. Oh, we'll go back to this. <laughs> ah, there we go. There we go. So now I can actually go in this full wide shot. You can see. A little bit easier. I'll go top down. Let's see if I can zoom out here. You can kind of see what's happening. So, see where I do the sleeves and stuff. Honey! I almost missed that. Thank you, kid. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah, the picture in picture. I can do. Yeah, there's lots of stuff I can do with this thing. That's the reference image. We can, not to forget our vision air system, that's what this easel is. If anyone's interested in that, I don't get anything for it. I just do it because I love the guy. And you can get those stores over on McKay Fine Art. You can get the files there. This is the blue, not the gold, but you can get the gold. Zoom back out to our super source red frame. Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> so much, too much tech to deal with. But it's fun. All right, so that's pretty much that. All right, so we can actually start working on the skull itself. All right, so let's take a look. If you guys follow along at home, let's take a look at what we got going on here. So we are an hour into this, and I've already gotten the jacket and everything done. Okay, done enough where it's done, aside from, like, ending work. So now, when you, when you, when you break this down, you start looking at it, be like, okay... I did this because it was under that. I did this because it was under this. I did this because under the skull. I did this because it's under. Okay, what's next? Okay, you start seeing. Okay, the hand still foreground. You start looking. The hair is behind the skull. Okay, 
You can open the mouth up here. We can pull the noses and eyes out uh, and start there. That's where I'm going to start. Okay? So follow along. <laughs> Cheers. All right. So this is what I'm going to pull inside the mouth. I'm going to pull this hair off. But I'm just going to kind of snap it. I'm just going to, yeah. I might actually, I might actually, for you guys who are down I might put a cut line here just to make it easier uh, so it doesn't get confusing and just kind of put the skull's head like here, like this, and do a cut. The reason I don't have it on there is because without the cut, you can, I'll show you the difference. Without the cut, I can roll it back. And when I start doing the hair here, I can let the hair kind of come up. You know, on, onto the guy. Uh, versus here, the hair is coming from like behind the skull like that. But I'll show you both sides what it looks like. So you kind of see the difference. And that's something you can add to your file or just hand cut it out pretty easy, however you want to do it. Is it easy to do background before foreground? Okay, so, that's a great question. This foreground is still white. I could have done it either way. I'm going to do the foreground last because it's going to be pretty panely and simple. Because I can just take this paper cut, put it right over it, and I can blast the background. Without even having to do a full mask. Um, if I wanted to do like a crazy background, I could do that first and then cover it up. It's just however you want to do it. Um, I'm doing it this way because I'm going to keep the background very simple and just loose. But if you were on like a black bike and you needed this white, then you could do it um, a little bit different. So it does change depending on the color of your panel. If I was on a black panel, this whole project would be flipped. And I've talked about that in other, other, um, other project files. So I want to pull the eyes, the nose... All right, so now I got the bulk of it. So light panel equals background to foreground. Yes, correct, Big Swatch. That's pretty much the rule. Sometimes, you know, so if I wanted to do this background first, I could have done it before you did everything else. Uh, but the way I'm doing it this way, you'll see how it works for this style because it's a loose background. If I wanted to paint like a bright red back here, I probably would have painted a red, I probably would have, Kept him. I put a put blah, 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 blah. I would have put a silhouette mask on here, sprayed the red, did all the background first, then covered it up after it was cured, and then did this work. It's probably what I would do. Because I wanted to save for a lot of freehand. Remember, I keep my paint pretty thin here because I want to freehand a lot. There are no opening bits. So I keep this really light, especially on the first pass. I keep the inside of the skull pretty light. Oh, you you got it just right, Big Squatch. Um, but the, the, there's no hundred. There's never a hundred percent rule. There's always there's va always variations. I'm gonna do. Inside the nose, pretty dark up top, and then put some little details inside, leaving the middle kind of bright like it's a septum filling up the middle, and I'm not doing too much in there. Um, am I going to put eyes in him or not? I think he's too big for pocket graphics. Eyes. 
But we may be able to do mixing cup eyes from the back side. Yeah. I'm just gonna go really light. I'm gonna spray into one. Just a little. And remember, I'm not spraying a ton here because I want to be able to freehand and soften these edges. Now we do have a starting bid. I'm going to write this up here because Kaylee's not here. From Gary Shees at 150. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Yeah, you know, so like Raymond, when I approach projects, sometimes I, I spend that time going, okay, which way am I going to do it? If I do it this way, sometimes it's, if I do it this way, I can do this color, then this color, this color. But if I do it this way, I can go this color, that color first. So which way do I want to go? Or is it on my dark surface, light surface, or an in-between surface? So the rules kind of change. Um, am I using candies versus transparents versus opaques? If I'm using opaque colors, I can go anywhere I want. If I'm using transparents... Um, I have to work with the base colors more. So it just, there's always a, there's always a tweak. So remember, I keep the paint pretty soft here. I don't want to go too heavy because I want to be able to freehand a lot of this stuff out. So I got him there. And the hair, I'm going to keep this hair really simple. So watch, I'm going to, I'm going to spray a little paint. And now I can take, da, 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 where are they? Hmm. Can't find my eraser sticks. So you can take a razor blade and just do light scratching for hair. We can take the Electric eraser. And just bring out some of those hairs. Or just freehand them. However you want to do it. Yeah, Gary's waiting for a few paintings. He's got a few paintings coming. The few guys that do. I need to get my button gear for. And you're always patient. So you're just keeping the hair simple. So you see how this side has the hard edge. Now this side, because I... Um, <laughs> I have to buy $12 to spare every month. I get it. Uh, so this side, if I wanted the hair to come on the front side of the skull, I could come over like this. So that's the different approaches for the left and right. So see how that one, you can see the difference between this side would have the skull. You'd actually see the side of the skull. This one, the hair is covering it. Which you can do one on each side, it actually looks cool. Appreciate that. Yeah, getting down to the booth and getting them clear just when I haven't been able to get down there. All the panels are here, and I've done some extra work to them and just picked away. So you got the hair. We got this. We got that. Now. Once that's done, you can pull the lower jaw right here because I'm leaving the teeth to the very end. Well, near the end. The finger is actually the very end. So you can pull the jaw. And all you really have to do here is drop shadow underneath where that jaw comes down. Thank you. 
this. Now, and then we're going to do the hair, just the beard, just little bits and just shades. We can do lots of erasing and lots of extra little details there. Now, I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing there. How's that? Should be good. Let me bring that reference image back up. So, yeah, I'm just doing below here. And then for the teeth, so when the teeth are coming up, so what I do at this stage is I kind of do a little down, downward dagger strokes between the teeth. So right where the V is, they come up, and I just kind of come down a little bit, little mini dagger strokes if you can pull them off. It's a great way to practice them. If you have the net of the, the, the teeth as a stencil. And then we're good there. Now we can pull off. You can pull off the whole face or I do this first. These two you fold over like this because they don't connect all the way down. You can rip them down. I just put a little bit right there, a little bit right there. That gives you the separation from front to the back of the palette. You can fold these guys down here, this one and this one. Same thing, just paint up here, just that littlest bit. This is just for registration. And now when you pull this all off, you have pretty much the whole skull. Warlock's in the house. What's going on, man? I have a couple of things peeled off here. I'm gonna have to fix that. So now, look, now I can freehand. I have all my shading. From the hat, now I can really darken up here like the hat's cast in the shadow on the hair. Some little bit of detail work on the skull. Right, gotta put a little detail up there. And then I kind of do the frilled eyebrows freehand. The markings are there, you'll be able to see them. And this is where I start, as the more you understand skull anatomy, you know you gotta keep the, the nose brighter. So a little bit of shadow to the left and right lets, that, lets the nose pop out. Black Ice Graphics. No, it didn't melt. We're, we've only climbed a little bit. We're at 78 degrees, 78 and a half. We're doing fine. But because I just did little bits of paint, now I don't have big harsh masking edges. And I can do some nice core shadows. I can maybe add a little crack to the skull coming over here. I can soften these edges by just freehanding a little detail around and outside of those joints. Dave, thank you, sir. Thank you all for the super chats tonight that are really helping. And just like I did down here from these teeth, I'm going to go up and do a little mini daggers. And I can go darker towards the side. See how fast that skull is coming together? Get that nice detail. Setting up for more detail work later. See, I can keep, see how I keep working that eye and keep darkening it?
so like last night we were at 84 up here and I'm at 78 now and a few of the colors because I mixed them at like about half an hour before the feed some of them are getting thicker already because it's so hot up here so even in 80 you can start affecting the paint so you have to keep reducing um, it just depends some colors are more finicky than others solvent you can get away with a lot more water base sometimes you have a little different things to contend with but the nice thing about water is you're not going to get solvent pop whereas with solvent paints if you're not careful you paint in this weather too thick too fast you could actually um, trap tail solvents in your paint and then they'll stay behind and they'll pop out a few months down the road after you finish the job it's really a lot of times humidity more than heat too it's just are you trapping solvents underneath I always like doing this little trick right here just to give it like almost like a new school tattoo you get that kind of soft shade see so that little half moon radius it gives like the that nice shadow like the hats cast in the shadow I can actually pull the brim fully. Now you see that nice, nice separation. And just take a little bit of paint. To make it good. Yeah, humidity is always the thing, man. It's really... Humidity is more dangerous to, to paint than temperature. Right, good. So we are at, what is it, 920. And we're already there. This one's right on track. Right on track. All right. So we've done teeth before. We're actually pretty close to the end of the main project is that what happened in the clear coat solid yeah so it's not always trapping moisture sometimes it's moisture um, especially if you're painting when it's really humid out so you will get that and that what happens a lot with clears let me take this off you ever have clear blush on you where it like almost turns a white milky haze look that's humidity a lot of times that's usually curable because it's humidity sitting on top keeping the solvents on top you kind of keep putting a skin layer blowing a fan over the top of it the whole time as it's cured will usually take that out uh, this especially happened back when they were lacquer uh nitrocellulose lacquer was notorious for it um but what can happen if it's too hot out, if you're not trapping humidity, sometimes you're trapping what's called, if you've heard the t term tail solvents, tail solvents are when, when paint, how paint dries is, it gets carried to the surface wet as a liquid, this, this carriers, water being a carrier and water based, uh, solvents being in a solvent base, or there's a hybrid of mix of the two. And that keeps the, the pigments and everything liquid, all the resins liquefied till it goes to the surface. Then as it's drying, those solvents are breathing and gassing out and leaving behind dried paint. If it's too hot, the top dries, creates a skin, and it traps tail solvents. It tra solvents that haven't been able to evacuate yet, so they're stuck. And what can happen is it all looks good, and you go a clear coat, it looks good. But what you didn't realize is you trap tail solvents back in your primer or your first base coat, because you painted base coat when it was 100 degrees out. And you went too wet too fast and it skinned too fast and it dried but there's still a little solvent left behind so what happens three to six months down the road if anyone knows about water pressure and hydraulic pressure um what will happen is six months down the road that thing's beating the sun especially in vegas uh, you don't have the humidity problem you have the tail solvent problem six months later that thing's sitting in the parking lot of the sun now that solvent that moist little molecule solvent sitting baking boiling under that clear and what to do water all hydraulic pressure always finds a way through anything and it, find, and, and it pops right through the clear and then your wax and dirt fills in the little crater and you get a dot 
When you try to sand it, the dot gets bigger because it's actually a bubble that popped. And the more it happens, the bigger the solvent is. So that's that's the kind of long-winded but basic explanation for it. So the big thing is the two biggest things, especially water-based and, and um, catalyzed lacquers or urethanes, air movement is key. Temperature is great. Temperature is one that can be hot, dries fast. I mean, if you keep fans and air movement over the surface as it's drying, and you don't force it to dry faster, or you just let those solvents, because what happens a lot of times the solvents try to get out, and then the humidity or the heat pushes it down. But if you have fans going over the surface, so when I finish base coating something after it's like like starting to dry, I keep fans over the surface, and that lets any tail solvents get out. Um, Paint Tech 101. Okay, so I gotta get these teeth done. When I do teeth, I work from outside, background to foreground, right? So I can do four teeth at a time. I'm gonna take the outer teeth out. All right, see that? Take the out. Uh, so my hands are sweating so much, that's what I'm doing. I keep burning through right here. Um, I should actually wear a glove because what's happening is the sweat of my hands is getting on this and it's actually rubbing a little paint off here so I, I gotta just be cautious of that oil paints are very, yeah oil paints yeah yeah I've never been a big oil fan all right so now that I've got the teeth done I pull the I pull the teeth out that I, I want and I paint the paint on the tooth next to it which is still masked and I let the overspray do the work but I'm actually painting, the paint is actually directly on the tooth itself, if you see that. Let me go nice and big. So, I'm putting the paint on the tooth. I'm not painting the tooth itself. I'm putting the paint on the actual tooth next to it. and letting the overspray get there on all four of those, right? And I can come down and do a little dagger stroke. Let's see. Now... I can pull next to it. And you see by painting on the teeth next to it, the overspray has created a nice soft shadow. And it's much easier to control. I mean, I can get fancy and come in here and add some freehand later to that. And add little breaks and but that comes with more freehand control. But I'm really just coming up and doing those dagger strokes from outside, from the tooth next to it. And then I'm just gonna keep working these next ones up and you'll see. And you'll see how really fast this process You're doing four teeth at once. Dagger stroke down, dagger stroke up. I'm gonna do these bottom one, two, three. I'm gonna leave that one. Now I can pull that middle one. Oops, actually I gotta paint on that middle one to get the other side. Ta-da! Now like I said, I can do little daggers. And I can add little pockets to the teeth if I'm comfortable with my freehand ability. There's all sorts of stuff you can do. And if they're not going with an airbrush at all, honestly, just putting a little dot and a dot will, on the tooth next to it will achieve a pretty rudimentary look, but it'll do it pretty well.
Ta-da! So now the teeth are pretty much done. I can do a little mist over it. This is nice if you're good with the electric eraser. You can come in and highlight the teeth if you don't want to use white. Just do little. You can do little daggers up. You could scratch, you could do anything. Oh, you could use white. And now we just cut the hand and the majority of it's done. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna use a post-it note. Cause my hand keeps softening the paint right there. All right. Hand. Now same thing, we're gonna look for what's beneath, what's, what's uh, background and work up to foreground. So I'm gonna do the knuckles back knuckles here. I'm going to do the bottoms. I'm going to do this. This is, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and work my way around just like I did the teeth. Scott, thank you for that. It's a fun one for sure. These projects you learn a lot from. They're really great in your studio too because, and you can put this on the side of bikes. You can put it on cars. You can you can add the lettering we want you, we, whatever you want, zombie apocalypse on top of it. You can do a zombie face, you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, I'll probably expand this project. This will probably be one that will update the files. And I'll do the face, maybe I'll do a zombie face, you know. I'll mess around with different looks for this one. So look, I got a shadow there, and there's the bone. I probably could have. Yeah, so I need to actually separate that. So I need to either find a curve that works. There we go. So that bone can kind of separate from outside the uh, sleeve. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Oops. Paint's getting thin. So like this red, I can already see because of temp, it's drying because it's we're approaching like 80 up here. So if you put it in the airbrush and cap, you won't have the issue. But sometimes these open cups will skin. And even solve it will, and the solvent will do it. Um, kind of happen both ways. Oh, we have a bid. Oh, my soundboard just went off, and Facebook probably shut off. Because the computer went into sleep. Two hundred from Dave Gregory. Thank you, sir. One looks good on t shirts. <laughs> okay, so we get down here. Yeah, and this is where when it's hot too, you'll, your little vent will dry, so make sure you keep that clear. 
and tip dry happens a lot more when it's just hot. But we're doing good, we're doing good. Oh, Marsh, I'll have to check that out. And now I'm going to do the knuckles. Remember, just like the teeth, you paint what's next to it. And you'll get a good... Uh, You'll get a good overlap. Yep, so I'm just working on that one, that one. We can pull this one. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just pulling. So I know this one's beneath this one, this one's beneath this one. I went boom, boom, boom. I can pull here, I can pull here, I can pull here. I can actually pull here as well, but I'll wait. Oh yeah, <laughs> chaotic man. I've done that. You know, the little vent hole gets, and you do a little back, and bam! <laughs> it's never fun, man. It happens to the best of us. And every time you do it, you're like, because you just knew it was so. It was such an easy thing to avoid. And that's why when it was that hot yesterday, I didn't do it live on camera. <laughs> All the world to see and mock forever. This one will make a cool print. Maybe I'll scan this one and photograph it. This could be a cool, this could definitely be a cool print. I haven't done a print run in a while. I do have prints of my pack of skulls one. I just I gotta put those in the store. I'm gonna pull that knuckle. Nope, not that one yet. Nope. Between the thumb and the forefinger right there. Yeah, it's a vent. Because if that gets clogged, the remember, air air isn't pushing the paint out. Air is creating a vacuum from in front of the nozzle that's pulling the paint. It's siphoning it down. So in order, you need um, CFM in equals CFM out. So you need air coming in to let it come out. The paint is still coming out, but it'll start to choke off. It won't flow as nice. And then what happened is it'll eventually stop, and you'll go to back flush it, and it'll pop the cap off because you created a back pressure vacuum inside the cap. So always check that vent hole in here or in the side bottles. There's a little vent on the side. Make sure you always check that. Marshall, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Let me know who you're going through for your prints. You're, you got, you're doing the prints and stuff too. So um, I was using a company out of um, Texas. They're great. And I love the work that I've done so far. But they're a lot pricier, so I can't keep the you know the cost down on them so definitely looking for other alternative printers okay so I got that one done now I get this one here That little one, that little one, I'm just working my way through. Now I can go bottom up. And this thing is pretty much done. You're welcome. A little drop shadow. Remember, paint most of the paint on the mask above it. 
So I'm painting the finger above it to create the shadow. Now I can create a little detail down in here on the knuckles. And I can do that anytime. I'm working my way up. Finger above it, coming down, do some detail. And then this one, yeah, that goes over and it's under. Actually, you know what? That one's, this finger's behind that knuckle, but it's this one. So this one, you gotta do a trick. Go halfway back. Make sure you get your good contrast under that finger, the pointer. Then you can pull the thumb, just don't pull the nail. Now, see how that did that? So now this finger looks like it's behind that one. And you can freehand a lot of that and make more sense of it. So we are at 200 from David Gregory, who's the last one I saw. Warlock. And I can take this finger off, and that is almost the last piece of mask. I kind of like having the little thumbnails on the skeleton hands. I know it doesn't make sense because it wouldn't really be there, but it just kind of. Just adds to it a little bit, I thought. Little details around it. And there's that thumbnail there. I just kind of like the way it kind of gives that extra little. And that's all the masking except for the background. Not bad for an hour. Yeah, yeah, I could put a cigar, it would be really cool too. I'm gonna stick that blue to my hand. Got it. From here on out, I can add as much detail. I'm gonna add some white. I'm gonna switch over to white in a little bit. So I'm gonna show you a little couple of tricks. If it's really dark. Now I can pull off the whole border. Which I have both borders on here, but. Oh, I left that one. I don't wanna leave that one. That's yeah, fine. But I will fix that. Easy peasy. So this is when you want to marry the background to the foreground, okay? And this is where flat surface is really easy to, to do it with a soft stencil. With a hard with a curve, you'd have to you definitely want to remask. Because right now he just looks like a sticker, okay? Um, 
and I don't like my work to look like stickers. Fix this tape. So this is where, now that I have him all done, now I can take this loose one, put this loose one over, and now we can do all sorts of stuff. So. I can just kind of keep it simple and just maybe do like fireworks, like with the blue. And we'll do this side like this. This one's the red. We'll do this with one of my swirls. I'm gonna do dark and then I'll do light. So now you do a nice brighter red. And this is where I can start taking the mask and just kind of blue. No. Um, sometimes the clear mask is worse because you look. Oh, uh, but. You could, so if you want to hand cut it, you could do the clear. Um, no, but it's not necessary. Now, what I do tell people, if you're really unsure, uh, and you really want to kind of be safe, what you could do is, before it was like this, you could uh, clear it, and then remask it in like, you know, that way you, you don't have to worry about anything. But now I got blue to blue, and it's fine. I can go up here. But yeah, you could definitely do a clear. There's really no wrong answer. There's um, whatever really kind of either safety net or security helps is best. I'm not one of these teachers that say or instructors or painters that you have to do it this way and this way only. That's the right way because I learned it that way and that's what this person taught me and I have to do it like this, period. Never works. Uh, I'm just going to clear up my brush. Put some white in here. I'm gonna do some little white highlights. And we're gonna call this puppy done. Ask you for a friend, of course. Of course! Tell your friend there's no wrong way to do it. Um, but a lot of times, especially when I'm painting like quick, if I let this dry normally, it's fine. But if I, because I'm painting so fast, this paint's not 100% dry. So if I, if I start putting masking on, this, especially this humidity, I do risk getting some delamination. Um, so I'm really careful at this stage. So I don't really do too much over masking. Um, what I would do at this point, if I was going to over mask it, I would take a little inner coat, or like uh, with this being Createx, I take 4050, put a little coat on it, like an inner coat clear, and let that cure out, and then I would. I would do uh, some more work from there. Alright, so now with the white, I can come in here. I can add some hairs. I can add little highlights to the lapel, the bow tie. 
to the shoulder. You know, I can do all this stuff now and just try to tie it together and brighten up the eye. And one thing I learned from a really amazing painter, Rod Fuchs, if you ever follow Rod's work, when he, Rod gets paint like this done, he'll usually clear it. And then he'll go back in and do all the white highlighting later. Um, you know, yeah, Steve's right. It is a lot different when, you know, the next day when the paint's cured, the mask is totally different. Look, I can have a few hairs coming over the jacket. And just mess around. And if you're not great, that free handing with a brush, I mean free handing with the airbrush, use a paintbrush. Go in here, you can do some brush work. Have some fun with it. Paint pens, whatever you want to do. Then go here and highlight. Yeah, when you look at Rod's work, you'll see he does a lot of that brush work, but he clears it. Then he can play around with it forever. And not worry about messing anything up. You know, now if you wanted to put like, you know, damage or bullet holes or rips and tears in the jackets, you can do all that stuff. You can just play at this one. Look, I'm just going to do a couple flood strokes here, make it look a little beat up. I'm going to sign this thing, and I think we're at our closing bids. If anyone wants to get in on that, we're at 200. If anyone wants to up that, now is your time. If not, forever hold your peace. And if not, this will go to David Gregory. And for those following along, you can keep adding stuff, changing stuff, tweaking stuff. I'm probably going to do some more work inside the, um, the skull, maybe highlight them a little bit more, like we'll put a little bit on the forehead here, maybe I'll use, this is illustration white, maybe I'll use some opaque white and just brighten them up a little bit more, but you can see in an hour and 50 minutes we went from nothing to a completed painting, this painting is available up on mckayfineart.com it is a $20 download Warlock thank you very much um, it comes with this size which is 11 by 14 and then a 12 by 18 version which is the same one just you get more of the lower jacket um, I'm not selling it as a double file it's just it's if you're on, if you're on a 12 by 18 panel it's, it's pre-sized and pre-bordered out for it yeah I, I'd wait on that just because it's so humid. But that's it, man. You know, like I said, that background, I just, that was simple. You could do fireworks. You could do a flag back there. You could remask it, go over and download my flag vector and do a full American flag behind it. Uh, you could do some fire behind it. You know, uh, I'd like to do this again on a black panel and do like, um, like I did that eagle painting, have like the, the red, white, and blue fire behind it and backlit them. Uh, that would look really cool. Um, oh man, head over to Lounge. I'm going to have to pop over there as well. Uh, let me sign this thing and maybe I will start cleaning up my workbench while over there. You know, I need my paint pen for this. I don't want to use a Sharpie. I hate Sharpies. Sharpies bleed. 
You know what? I'll sign it afterwards before I clear it. I want to thank everyone for popping in on this Friday night edition of Airbrook Down Dirty Tricks. I want to thank everyone for pre-downloading. I thank everyone for the super chats and the bids. It was a great fee. It was a great night. Um, hope the sound was pretty good. I still had to have one AC running, but we managed to get through it. Much better tonight than last night. Last night wouldn't have been as good of a feed, and I don't want to give a bad feed. Um, so, Raymond, if you need any other help, you know, private message me if you get stuck on something. And uh, everyone have an awesome, happy, and safe weekend. Thank you, Dave Gregory. This one's for you, unless I miss something. But uh, we can catch up on that later. And uh, everyone have a happy and safe weekend. See you all next week, hopefully. <laughs>